Welcome everybody, happy and healthy New Year. That's what we got light at the end of the tunnel. So we start meeting now. Apologies for absence. Yeah, I've had a couple of chair from Natalie Matum, Jackie Davis, uh, Council Anson Pew, I don't think she's here, Fiona Pixwell and Alex Bahari. Thank you. Uh, have we got any disclosure of personal and prejudicial interest? Everybody was in the meeting, put the last meeting, uh, have you read the minutes? So we can, I can just tick them off as a read, as a correct record. Sure, sure. Yeah, I confirm I've read them. Thank you, Grace. Yeah, yeah. Grace, if you need to start. No, it's not. Uh, run can everybody move themselves, please? Because there's a lot of background noise, as you can imagine, with 20 or 30 people. We've inherited Grace. Okay, thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'll give you an update on the um, what's happening around Wales with the Armed Forces Covenant. Um, basically, if you recall, last time I spoke, um, I said, regrettably, the, they appointed somebody to be the school's liaison officer. There's a project with the Welsh Local Government Association called Supporting Service Children in Schools. And they had grant funding to put regional people in place to, to look after our schools and to support education departments. Um, the original person they put in place, which was covering a very wide area, how on earth she's going to support every school, I don't know, is going from Ceredigion to Pembrokeshire, Carmarthenshire, Swansea, Neath but Talbot. Um, so it's quite a wide area. But unfortunately, she obviously thought it was too big a task because she only um, was in post for a fortnight and she resigned. But they have appointed somebody now called Yasmin Todd. I met with her last week. Very enthusiastic. Um, she's a qualified teacher and a um, from an armed forces family background herself. Very, um, very okay with what the issues are and, and looking forward to her supporting our schools. She is meeting with Swansea's education department shortly and we'll be working with them to see how we can encourage the schools to initially identify all those pupils from armed forces families that are in these schools and then to work apply for funding and work with some projects with them. <clears throat> um, I also reported last time that the my fellow armed forces covenant liaison officers around Wales were working with the Welsh Government and the Welsh Local Government Association to improve communication with the armed forces community. Um, they're producing, we're producing a newsletter, which should be out in the next, um, if not in February, it'll be at the beginning of March, um, and a website which should be online shortly. Um, we're also in the final stages of preparing um, an Armed Forces Covenant Awareness Training Programme. And when that's fully available, I'll initially be starting that off with um, working with the frontline staff in Swansea Council and then seeing if we can put it out there to the wider community later on. Um, it's a very comprehensive programme. It goes through all aspects of what kind of um, factors affect the armed forces community and what support is out there for them. Um, funding. Now, the Armed Forces Covenant Trust Fund, there are no live programmes at the moment. Um, so the closing date for the last round was last month, the, the end of December. Um, I know that prior to the closing date, Finola was working to finalise a few applications from people, but I noticed now she's passed her apologies for today, hasn't she? So I don't know um, how many we had going forward. Um, there are um, funding streams available out there for organisations to support them through COVID and through the recovery of COVID. And I'd encourage all organisations to look into those. Um, most of the information would be available on um, council website or on the Welsh Government website. And as I'm made aware of um, any grants, I'll let you know about them. 
Uh, the Welsh Government are looking at priorities and they have done quite a bit of um, support at the moment regarding housing, particularly social housing issues for Armed Forces veterans. They do have a pathway um, which they've sent out to all local authorities a few years back, um, highlighting where, they where um, Armed Forces families should be supported, but that needs updating now, so they're in the process of updating that. And suicide prevention, I think this is one of the advantages of having liaison officers in the community we're able to flag up those issues that we are seeing <clears throat> and but last october november time we all reported that regrettably we are seeing um or we're having reported to us higher instances of suicide in the community so the peter williams in the welsh government is taking that forward with the um the suicide prevention team in the welsh government to have regional people right throughout wales so they are being made aware that there is additional armed forces support in the communities for people and victoria i can see you've taken an interest there um i'll be keeping you in touch with what's happening there that's all i have for now um the Armed Forces community has been fairly quiet now that they're back down in lockdown. The issues we are coming across again appear to be associated with housing and emergency housing issues. Um, and I am pleased to say that lots of the housing and, housing and Armed Forces support organisations are really pulling out all the support, all the stops possible to support these people. But unfortunately, there is a death of dearth of um, housing available at the moment because, um, you know, those that required housing at the beginning have occupied the accommodation that is available, and we haven't had the rollover of people moving on to vacate those um, those temporary accommodation arrangements. <clears throat> but it is something that is being looked at, and they're looking at social housing for some kind of support. So I'll let you have further information on that when I have more of it. Uh, that's it. Thank you, Chair. Does anybody has any questions? Thank you, Grace. Some good news. Has anybody got any questions for Grace? Grace yeah. yeah, Grace. There's, sorry, Tom Sloan here, Ospreys in the community. Um, just in regards to the school's um, engagement, if there's any support that we can um, we can lend. We're obviously working with primary schools for online engagement and secondary schools as well. Yes. So if there's anything um, that uh, my staff can help with, just uh, feel free to get in touch. Yes, certainly. Yeah. I think um, I have let her know of different organisations that could support. You are one that I've put forward, but I'll make sure of that now and uh, I'll forward your contact details on. Fab, brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. Okay. Is Captain Chris here? Mm -hmm. Rob Evans, do you want to give any updates? Was Captain Chris is new? Uh, yes, Chief uh, Rob Evans from HMS Cambria, thank you for that. Uh, with regards to engagement, um, hopefully people are aware that we've got uh, a Wales and West engagement uh, warrant officer, Rob Govia, that's uh, always available and he'll hopefully have got um, his details. Um, with regards to our unit, a lot of obviously our activities are all, all ceased at the minute, including a lot of reservist activities. So I, I haven't actually um, got many people I can get out in the field at the minute, so to speak. But um, certainly I uh, want also Rob Govier and the uh, outreach team uh, who do a lot of other activities. That's uh, Chief Paul Jones's team. Um, they're still working um, throughout this and do a lot of this stuff online as well. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I know Rob, so uh, I know he's very good at in the, with people and uh, getting things done. So we probably contact Rob. Uh, Jack, he's not yours, so is there anybody else? Mm -hmm. There is somebody from the um, yeah. Sorry about this, we can't see the screen because we don't want to let the ones, so we've got to go through the names. Apologies. 
Chris Morell, I'm here. Oh, there we are. We found you now. Okay. Well then, Chris. Hi. Yeah, um, sorry. Yeah, I'm Chris Moran, Deputy Director of Therapies and the Exec Lead for the Armed Forces Forum in um, Swansea Bay. Sorry, I'm very rarely, I haven't been able to make these meetings. So I don't generally work on Mondays, which is un un unfortunate. So Jackie's come a few times, I know, who's our independent member chair. So our last meeting was on 11th of November, which was the first meeting since the pandemic, but we did have a celebratory event um, with the armed forces sometime in between that. Um, Swansea held an online Remembrance Day for staff, service for staff to participate in the silence with all of the health board. Um, work is a general bit of work has been done in the health board to improve patient affairs functions and support for bereavement and care after death. Um, that centre is in the process of being set up and a manager has been appointed and there may be connections between this group and other groups to support veteran families where people might want to access and link to the Care After Death Centre. Um, so we'll give you more details of that when it gets set up. Um, we I've just had a thing pop up around the application for the gold employee status. We will uh, are hoping to put in an expression of interest and are looking at what we can do um, as areas of improvement for that. And we've started to look at um, areas where we have uh, reservists and military connections in the health board to see what areas we can support in terms of advocacy in areas of advocacy. Um, ALAC, uh, the Artificial Limb Service is currently recruiting additional prosthetists and technicians, and this will have a beneficial effect on our service. This is something that's been raised as a concern in the past, so that we would should be able to give more time to with each individual patients and uh, appointments better accessibility, and the delivery of prosthetics should be enhanced over the forthcoming year, um, providing COVID restrictions are lifted. And the next bit I had is Veterans NHS, but Victoria is here, so I won't steal that. So that's it from me. Okay, thank you. Victoria? Hello there. Hi. So in our service, in the Veterans Service, we continue to be very busy. In the last three months, we've had 33 referrals. And because of the pandemic, we have adapted the way that we work and we've gone online. One of the benefits of going online has meant the way that we send out opt-ins. So when someone's referred into our service, we used to send them a letter saying, you've been referred to our service, please fill this letter and send us proof of ID. We've now converted that to a form where they can fill it in online and send it back to us. And as a consequence, we now have 25, uh, well, 25 people opted in over the last three months. That's a 76% rate of uptake, which is actually very good for a service like ours. That means that we are able to do a lot more assessments and get to a lot more people. It also means that we're very busy, but that's fine. Um, we're, virtu we're completely virtual in our approach at the moment, so we're not having any face-to-face, -face, and that works well most of the time. Um, one of our therapists, Oxana Jones, has left. She's gone off to work as a psychologist for another health board and we've advertised her post and her post, um, we had one person apply for that who already worked for us. So she's gonna take over that permanent post and we will hopefully be advertising her temporary post in due course. So a bit of change for us. We continue to be busy um, and hopefully we'll get back to being able to do some face-to-face -face sessions in the near future, but we've got to wait this pandemic to to um to move away yeah, yes <laughs> As i like that yes for it to go away so we can get back but actually i think a lot of what we've learned through this pandemic we will continue to use so it swings and roundabouts thank you That's, uh, well done thank you mm -hmm. neil are you there Yes, 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 yes. Sorry, is that, is that for me? 
Yes, nice to see you again. Yes, and you. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for uh, inviting me to attend your meeting today. Um, I'm conscious that I have spoken to a few people already uh, who are present at this meeting, so apologies if uh, if some of you have heard this before. But I just um, I, I, I wanted to take the opportunity just to update you on what the Royal Air Force Benevolent Fund uh, is doing, and in particular what I've been trying to establish in your area. So if you're happy with that, I'll just uh, 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 go ahead. I'm happy to take any questions uh, at all, either as we go through or or at the end. Um, so so for those of you who aren't familiar with the RF Benevolent Fund. Um, we are, uh, as the name suggests, there to look after what we call the Royal Air Force family. Uh, and that is anybody who has ever served in the Royal Air Force, regardless of how long. Uh, it, it could have been six months, it could be a full career, um, but immediately having joined the Air Force, uh, you become eligible for the support throughout life, uh, uh, you know, so into retirement, so, so beyond your serving, uh, serving time. Um, so it's anybody who's ever served in the Royal Air Force, uh, their partner, and any uh, spouse or partner, and then any uh, dependents. And normally that's up to the age of uh, 18, although we look at everything on a case-by-case -case basis, and there are uh, some exceptions to that. In terms of uh, the support we provide, we're, we are a welfare uh, charity. So we're the largest charity looking after RAF uh, personnel and their families. Uh, but we uh, work solely in support of welfare need. Um, so we are slightly different from uh, RAFA, the Royal Air Force Association, who you're probably also aware of, um, who have an element of their work uh, being welfare. They also have an element uh, of caseworkers, and I'll come to that in a moment. And then, of course, they have the, the Royal Air Force Association clubs, which is very much the sort of camaraderie uh, and the subscription side to what they do. Um, we differ in that we are purely about welfare um, and um, uh, and every penny that is raised. We're, we're not supported by the government. We're, we're, uh, everything's raised by charitable donation. Uh, but every penny of that goes towards welfare. Um, last year, uh, we spent uh, just over £27 million on the RAF family, and that was uh, a, a split of about £20 million on veterans and their families and about £7 million on serving personnel and their families. Um, clearly, there is uh, a, an impact that we're all feeling uh, from COVID, and so while we are going to continue to uh, support in the way we have done before, we will probably see a reduction in, in spending this year uh, because of course our um, uh, fundraising income has been very severely impacted by uh, by covid 19. that said uh, what we're trying to do and and the purpose for my speaking to you today uh, uh, is to increase beneficiary numbers um, if I'd have spoken to you two years ago when I joined the fund after retiring from the Royal Air Force, uh, at that point, we, that year, we helped 52,000 uh, people. Last year, uh, as a result of the uh, reaching out campaign, what we called our radar campaign, uh, we, we were able to raise that number to 71,000. Uh, but we are aware that of the sort of 1.3, 1.4 million people that are in the RAF family and therefore eligible for our services, we know that over 100,000 people uh, as we speak are in urgent need of support and 300,000 uh, uh, are in need of um, support to a lesser extent. So whilst we're very pleased that we've been able to increase those numbers, <clears throat> excuse me, of course, there's uh, there's a lot of work to do and we mustn't rest on our laurels. Um, the type of welfare support we provide is, is as you would expect, um, a large number of the veteran population that we look after are quite elderly. Um, and so um, we, we assist with things like assisted living at home, care provision, uh, top up fees um, for nursing homes. Um, uh, we do an awful lot of, of work, things like installing uh, wet rooms into houses, allowing people to remain in their homes for longer rather than go into uh, full time residential care. And also a lot of um, uh, assistance with financial grants, one-off grants, uh, either small or large, um, and we're able to deliver those quite quickly. Um, and that's where we work with uh, the Royal Air Force Association, uh, the Royal British Legion and uh, SAFA, uh, 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 where we use their caseworkers uh, to uh, interact with potential beneficiaries on our behalf. And, uh, and they build up the, the cases which are then submitted to us. 
Um, for small grants, i.e. anything under £15,000, that's £15,000, uh, we have a small grants committee meeting which meets uh, approximately every two weeks. For anything over that uh, amount of money for the larger grants, it's about every six to seven weeks. But what this means is we are able to deliver um, support to people quite quickly, uh, which of course is particularly important for, for some of those in urgent need. Um, we, um, uh, as well as as well as providing uh, the type of assistance I've mentioned, we also, up until uh, this time last year, were providing respite breaks, which sadly, of course, we've had to stop because of the pandemic. And in fact, our respite home in Sussex uh, has had to be closed very sadly. But we are looking to reinvest the money that was uh, used in subsidising that home to provide respite around the whole country uh, in whatever form that may take and as the um, as, as COVID allows us to do that. Uh, so that's very much work in progress at the moment. Um, so as I say, the uh, access to our funds can be really straightforward. If it's a simple case, one of the uh, benefits of COVID, uh, always looking for that silver lining and a very big cloud, but it has allowed us to refine the way in which we operate. So it is easier to access funding or support from us uh, via our website now. And in fact, people are able to uh, apply for a one-off grant up to £750. Pounds. Um, uh, without the need for a caseworker, they can actually go onto the website. Of course, we have to do checks and balances and, and some elements of our support, partic particularly financial support and the large grants are means tested. Um, but we've tried to make it as easy as possible from identifying the point of need to actually being able to deliver that support. Um, so, um, so our website has enabled that and we've continued to um, uh, refine processes so that we can actually make the, the sort of beneficial journey uh, as easy as possible. Um, but the one thing about the fund that I would stress is, um, and I, I served in the Air Force for, for 28 years and uh, uh, a large part of that involved with managing people and I've been associated with the fund for, uh, for my whole service career. Um, one, one of the things that uh, is particularly good is the fact that we look at each case individually. Uh, we do have uh, themes, if you like, the things that you would expect, mobility, uh, as I say, the uh, uh, making adjustments to people's homes, social isolation, mental well-being. Uh, again, we've put more money into that throughout the pandemic uh, and we uh, do a lot of calls to beneficiaries to try and combat social isolation. But each case is looked at independently. And as you're aware, personnel and welfare issues very rarely fit into a neat pigeonhole. And so the whole idea of the support that we provide is that it's best spoke to meet the individual's absolute requirements rather than trying to uh, uh, sort of pigeonhole it into something we already provide. So so the the type of support we give can literally be anything and and um uh, and we we are constantly surprised by uh, some of the things that do come our way away from the normal themes and it's to anybody really it's not just uk based we're supporting people overseas as well um so the reason for speaking to you today, and thank you again for the invitation, is that uh, one of my roles as a regional director, I look after uh, South England and South Wales. And one of the areas that I've been concentrating on, particularly since lockdown through forums like this, is being able to get our message of support out there. Um, the three biggest issues we have, as I mentioned, we know there's between 1.3 and 1.4 million people eligible for our services, but not everybody will be aware that we're there. Um, so, um, you know, particularly with the uh, the older generation who uh, perhaps no longer working age retired, um, might not be aware that we're here, or if they are aware that we're here, they might not realise that they are still eligible for our services. Um, and those are our two biggest issues. Hence, why um, uh, the opportunity to, to address a forum like this is is most welcome. Um, and really, what we're trying to do is get our message out there so that we can increase reaching out to those people who um, uh, who are not aware of our services or don't realise that they're eligible for them. Um, so the third problem we have is that particularly service people uh, and retired service people are not very good at asking for help. 
and uh, and as a result of that um you know we, we can't do an awful lot to combat that but what we can do is at least make sure people are, are aware and make sure that the route to that support from initial contact is made as easy and as pain free as possible so um what i've been trying to do is establish networks in regions um in the south south of england and south of uh, wales um knowing that we have veterans in those areas um but not always the easiest to reach. It's very important for me to be able to brief at events like this so that if veterans are identified, they can be, a, be made aware of our services. Um, initially, prior to uh, lockdown, we were working very closely with the NHS. So I see NHS are represented today. Um, I was uh, having a lot of meetings with NHS trusts um, many of whom were going for the um, the Armed Forces Recognition Scheme or uh, a version of it. It seems to be different in different parts of the country, I'm learning. But um, but uh, we were getting involved with a lot of the NHS to be able to work with NHS who could identify our services to, uh, to patients uh, should they come in and identify themselves as military. And it could be something as straightforward as having, um, you know, a form or a registration form that has a box in it saying, have you ever served in the military? It could be through personal contact when people are coming in for appointments. But by working with the NHS in that way and by explaining to the NHS for who it is we can help and how we can help, we found that to be a tremendous help. And I've been um, uh, I've been responsible for uh, littering many hospitals with uh, posters and all sorts of things in staff waiting rooms, in hospital waiting rooms, so that people are aware that we're there to support them. Um, also, uh, briefing at things like GPs forums, mandatory training days, Quite often uh, we've been asked to come in and uh, just sort of tag on to a half hour presentation and Q&A session so that people who are at that point of delivering that support, that NHS support, are aware of what we do and might just identify uh, somebody in their day to day uh, duties. Sorry, Victoria, I can see you've got your hands up. No? Uh, uh, yes, oh, no, it did. It did. Because I think it would be really helpful for you to come to our clinical network meeting, Neil. I would love to. Perhaps we can pick up on that. Yes, we could. But also, um, I'm a small cog in Swansea Health Board, but we have a veteran therapy team in every health board throughout Wales. So right. it might be interesting for you to link in with our clinical director, Neil Kitchener, in okay. Cardiff as well, for you to let him know that you're about. OK, that's really kind. Thank you. If I could get your email address, perhaps we can establish contact uh, um, after the meeting and then sort of take it from there, that would be great. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Um, but the NHS have been, uh, you know, for obvious reasons, we stood back as soon as uh, uh, the pandemic hit because, uh, you know, our poor NHS people are working hard enough as it is without uh, me bothering them. But um, uh, but no, it, we found that the NHS uh, were an excellent source and they were actually very keen to, to engage with us as well. Um, and also just tying in with the other service charities, the Army and the Navy and Marines, um, you know, quite often through some of the veteran links that I've made with different establishments and different groups, um, we've come across people from the other services who have been in need and I've been able to refer across there. So so it's very much, yes, I, you know, my 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 um, my role is solely about the RAF family, but of course it is very useful in it being able to identify any veterans in need and pass those across as and when we come across them. Um, so really, uh, without going into any more detail, that is, that is, um, say, the RAF Benevolent Fund. Um, we are going to be continuing to grow our beneficiary numbers. We're noticing, as you'd expect, as we go through COVID-19, we're starting to get more referrals. It was interesting initially, referrals dropped off almost altogether, and then they've just been steadily increasing. And what we've been doing is adapting the way in which we deliver those services, and in fact, introducing new services as well uh, in order to, uh, to combat some of the problems, particularly mental health and social isolation with the elderly. Um, and I say thank you very much indeed for the opportunity for uh, to, to be able to speak to you today. I say it's a vital part of the work that we do, and I'm very aware from the discussions I've had so far with some of you uh, and with colleagues in the service uh, that we do have veterans who are not necessarily that easy to reach in South Wales because the RAF footprint now is very, very small in terms of serving population. 
but that doesn't mean that the veterans who have retired there, of which there are a considerable, considerable number, should be overlooked. And I'm really keen to identify those areas where they're actually more difficult to reach just to make sure that we get that message of support out. So thank you very much in, in, indeed for your time uh, this afternoon. And if there are any more questions, I'll be very, ha very happy to uh, to take them. Thank you. Christine? Yeah, mine wasn't, wasn't a question. Mine was an offer to, to, to uh, make contact with you as well in, on behalf of the Health Board for our Armed Forces Forum. And we were doing some work around champions on wards in non-COVID times. We at the moment we it's not possible. But no it's not our plan. Thank you. Phil. Good afternoon, Neil. Uh, my name is Phil Flower. I'm the wing commander for the Southwest region of the Royal Air Force Air Cadets, plus the uh, Cadet Forces champion for the Lord Lieutenant. So uh, on a on a totally different aspect, really, um, you're on about social isolation. I, I've got 21 squadrons that are based throughout Southwest Wales, uh, and obviously a, a direct route through the group captain who's in charge of uh, Wales in the West of England. Now, with, with those squadrons, those cadets and those staff, um, you know, there's a massive opportunity for community engagement. We, we hear a lot about the Wings Appeal and, uh, you know, we really get involved in that. And that's something I've only been in post uh, just over a year. It's something we push forwards. And, um, you know, the RAF Benevolent Fund should have an equal stance and equal support, uh, not only in the fundraising, but, you know, do we, do my staff and do the cadets have a, have a play, you know, a place to play in relation to your veterans? Uh, I'm not only looking at... Um, you know, raising funds for you, but uh, actually encouraging these uh, these Royal Air Force veterans um, to maybe to maybe join the Royal Air Force Air Cadets, and that's that's not a pitch to get extra staff, but you know, <laughs> you're on about social isolation. Uh, there's, a, there's a huge community engagement there, uh, and you know, we've got many ways to enhance their personal well-being with. Tremendous qualifications, both theoretical and practical. So, you know, if somebody's got a disability that, and they can't canoe or they can't climb or they can't do archery, then there's loads of teaching qualifications that we can we can give them. So, I think that the the, yeah, the Royal Air Force footprint is um, is decreasing in Wales, but the Royal Air Force Air Cadets, you know, is is very strong. So. You know, I, I would look forward to a meeting with you to see how we can approach that. And uh, somebody suggested a while back is why, why can't squadrons sort of uh, not adopt a veteran, but um, show some community engagement with, with veterans? Um, I don't know uh, the potential. We may have to have some sort of a compliance. We're all vetted to you know a huge degree. So, you know, that's one way. Uh, to maybe contact the veterans or for you to contact the veterans to see if they want to come on board. That will certainly um, um, work towards community engagement and self-isolation. So, uh, you know, we'd be really interested to to look at that. And uh, I'll send you an email and, and move forwards because uh, it, it's strange when you, you do deal in around the youth all the time. It doesn't make you feel your age. So <laughs> I'm not going to tell you mine. So, uh, so yeah, that's a, that's a distinct offer and hopefully a way forward, not just a fund for the Benevolent Fund, which which I think has been forgotten, certainly by the Royal Air Force Air Cadets, certainly in my wing. Uh, and, you know, to be positive in relation to the engagement with your with your veterans, etc. No, well, thank thank you very much for that offer, Phil. And certainly let's uh, let's pick that up offline. It's um, um, it was very heartening, actually, over Christmas. We had a number of uh, stations, RAF stations, got involved in delivering small food parcels and they were really very straightforward food parcels uh, but but to veterans and obviously it was all done uh, covid compliant but uh, the feedback we had from that sort of engagement with the veteran community was absolutely fantastic people clearly feeling very lonely very isolated at the moment um, and as you say some uh, a youthful person pitching up in their uniform on the front door just to say hello or a form yeah, of contact yeah really we had some lovely feedback from that and i think as we step through this current situation um the opportunity to engage in more of that type of of, of work would be very good so thank you i look forward to speaking to you even if we put a joint um, presentation or joint afternoon um yeah. you know, i i can certainly um pull on some funds to assist but uh yeah you know it, and the cadets can get loads of qualifications through the community for helping so not just the the qualification side their own self well-being uh, will be increased so uh, yeah i'll send you an email 
Can thank I... you very much indeed. Okay. Can I come in there? Yes, yes, um, Phil and Neil, um, with, with the council, uh, with the Neath Patarbet Council in my instance, um, we've had meetings on what kind of community support we can put together for people who are suffering with isolation and loneliness. And one suggestion, um, practicalities aside, is that um, young people buddy up with um, isolated older people um, to just have a telephone conversation with them. And I think there's an ideal opportunity here for cadets to buddy up with the isolated veterans. I think they would enjoy nothing more than talking to a cadet about their experiences in the service. And um, I think that would be a brilliant way for you to sort of connect the two generations. Think yeah, not, that. yeah, I think it's an awesome idea. It's not just for the Royal Air Force Air Cadets, it's for the Army and the Sea Cadets as well, who, who perform yes. admirably in the community. I think there would there would be an expectation that they'd be monitored by a, a member of staff, uh, but not actually take part, just to cover up maybe our compliance and yes. the other cadet forces. But it's certainly something that, uh, you know, we are hoping to get back. I think all the cadet forces are looking to get back, hopefully within the next three or six months. Uh, and that could be something that could be adopted, you know, quite easily twice a week on a parade night. Um, you know, those uh, any small step forwards could be be a massive, um, you know, reality for the for the veterans. So I, I'm 100 percent through that. Certainly all the squadrons I've got. And uh, and, you know, Neil, we could maybe take that wheels wide and, uh, you know, certainly throughout the country. Mm. Yeah. What an exciting opportunity. It's um... Uh, as I say, the check and chat tools that we've been doing over, well, for, uh, really since um, October last year, have been a, an absolute lifeline um, for people. And, you know, with, with some reporting that if it were not for that call, they wouldn't be speaking to anybody for weeks on end. So, um, you know, they, they, certainly one of the trends we've really seen, unsurprisingly, is social isolation uh, leading to mental health problems. And, um, you know, it can be small steps like that that can make all the difference to somebody. So, no, I'm very grateful, Phil. And we'll, we'll certainly uh, take this offline. Thank you. Hey, no worries. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Neil. I'd say you've had some good positive remarks there from a few people. No, that's that's been terrific. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. Neil, I've got everybody's email address, so I'll, I'll send them to you after everything. That's really kind. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. And thank you, everybody else. Um, is John here from the men's shed? Is there, uh, is there, have anybody else got anything to uh, add to or something they'd like to say or report? Good afternoon. I'm uh, Stephen Sullivan. I work with uh, Finola Pickwell um, at Haffel, um, the Strategic Pathways team. Um, I've got an update on um, applications and things moving forward, if if that would be OK. Yeah. Um, with the last tranche of applications for the Armed Forces Covenant Trust Fund um, uh, pot, Wales actually submitted 25 applications into the final round. Um, and we should be hearing um, by the 15th or start in the week beginning the 15th of February um those who were successful and 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 have been um granted funds um swansea based veteran um services there was only um one application uh for the final round and that was for garrison farm community um interested company um but there are other um applicants and and um, uh, teams and projects around the area that, that that can move and and do actually work within the Swansea area um, I'm pleased to say that Haffel was successful in their bid for Armed Forces Covenant Trust Fund um, Force for Change program um, that will include a digital inclusion program for veterans throughout Wales um, more information uh, will follow on that shortly. 
Um, Finola and our management, senior management team are currently working on a, um, a way forward with that. Um, so that's the, the update from, from Haffel. Thank you. Thank you very much. Phil? Okay, I got I got three computers in front of me and three mice. Do you think I can ever get to the right mouse? No, I can't. Um, so on your yeah, left, that's why. <laughs> it was um, yeah, just to touch back really on on recruit uh, recruiting veterans. It's not just the Royal Air Force, uh, veterans from the Royal Air Force that you know certainly my organisation would be interested. I think Army, C, um, you know, and the Royal Air Force. So we're all interested in trying to get new staff. So there's a little bit of a selfish uh, reason there. But um, yeah, it's, it's not been good for anybody, I don't think. And, and anybody who, who says they haven't been affected uh, with their mental health and well-being, um, I would challenge that over the last 10 or 12 months. So don't ever forget the Connect Forces because, you know, we're busy all the time. We're busy most weekends and, and two evenings a night, uh, two evenings a, a week. So, um, you know, we're in a prime position really to sort of help these veterans if that's what they so wish to do, uh, to come on board and, uh, you know, we can increase their physical and mental well-being, new skills. Um, but we are looking as well to try and obtain funds for the Royal Air Force Air, Air Cadets. And this isn't a, a sales pitch, uh, but we're trying to make things, uh, encourage the youngsters to come back because I think all youth groups especially have been affected with COVID. Uh, and although we're, we're heavily involved in the virtual uh, arena, I think the, the young people have got a lot of, you know, pressure on them with virtual training from school. So, you know, we are certainly trying to provide some sort of extra activities and, and look for funding for young people, certainly within the Connect Forces, uh, to move forward as well. And, and, you know, by doing that, we can hopefully maybe provide different activities for the veterans. So, you know, it's a full circle, really. Uh, we can now provide great experiences for veterans in material of what service they've been in. So, you know, please don't forget the Cadet Forces because working and uh, developing around young people is one of the best opportunities that, that we can have and can uh, certainly lift people's, you know, self-worth. And I know you all, and, and I'm not trying to tell you to sit, suck eggs, but, um, you know, don't forget the Cadet Forces. And if you need any help, uh, as I said, Louise has asked me to come along and um, bang the drum for Cadet Forces and helping vets, so just let me know. So, uh, you know, any veterans that are interested, please, you know, come on board. And if you can see any funding, we're looking for paddle boarding and, uh, and activities like that, not just for the cadets, but certainly veterans could get involved and, and be, you know, um, you know well represented in, in, in the Cadet Forces. That's about it, really. Tom, are you this... Are you still there? Uh, hi, Wendy. Yes, I'm. Hiya. Do you want to say something? I can't hear you, Tom. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hi. Sorry. Can Can everyone hear me? Yeah, just about. Yeah, hi. I was just um. Did Did you say has anybody else got updates or or questions, Wendy? Yeah. I, if I could just throw a couple of things in. Um, as long as everyone can hear me, alright. So I'm having a few IT problems today. Um, nice to see everybody. Yeah, just to let everyone know that Blesma is still here. We're still doing our business. Um. A lot of it online, working from the office, but I am getting out and about for essential visits only if uh, if it's an emergency or an urgent need, and we we can do that. Um, the the two the two things that I wanted to mention, I don't know if anybody else has had any issues with this. There's an issue with winter fuel payments, where people normally get a winter fuel payment in. November, around about November time, but there's been a, I think a computer, a new computer system um, installed with DWP, and that's caused a lot of issues. And there's a, there's, there's short staffing um, issues related to COVID-19, etc., which means that most people will get their winter fuel payment by the 22nd of January, but some people have dropped off the system, and unless you phone up or get in touch with DWP, you may not get your payment this year. So, or, or last year. Um, 
so it's worth just going online and getting in touch with DWP and the phone call can take up to 45 minutes or more to get through but there is an issue and we've had 60 plus members in our well from Blesma who have been in touch with us to, to, to find out what's going on with that issue uh, and that's the information we've had from DWP. Um, the, the, other, the other one that I've found is citizens advice and this is specifically one in Bridgen that I'm, I've been using they're not doing online support it, it all seems to be either um, well they won't even do telephone actually uh, to a certain extent but it's it's email or telephone so it would be handy if they could do online support because I've got some members who can't talk on the phone because they've got hearing issues but they do use somebody to support them um, with signing etc uh, and online would be better. So they're my two issues at the moment, in, including having to constantly get in touch with NHS, um, OTs, et cetera, to try and support members and veterans because they're not getting their appointments, they're not getting um, their regular contacts because of COVID-19. So they're the main issues I'm coming up against. And I, I noted the comment from Christine about ALAC, um, the prosthetics, that's, that's great, aware of that. and. Um, from what I'm getting at the moment from my members, uh, at Swansea Alec are supporting very, very well. So I'm pretty happy on that front. Thanks, Tom. This is quite disappointing about the winter fuel payment. Yeah. But yeah. I'm not surprised with the DWP anyway. Uh, that is really upsetting, but that, that could be upsetting or the, the way that somebody can pay their bills. So that needs to be really looked at. I've not heard anybody say anything about it, but... Um, there obviously are lots of people. Yeah, I'll send a paragraph through um, just to just to outline what we've been told by DWP and also by Veterans UK who do deal with some well, a very small amount of war pensioners and war widows who don't get state pension, they get war pension. So some a very small amount of winter fuel is paid by Veterans UK but the majority is paid through DWP. So I'll, I'll send a paragraph through just to explain what we've been told so far. Great, thank you. Okay. Grace, oh, sorry, Pat, you first. Hi, Hi. Um, so I'm from um, Citizens Advice, Swansea and Ethelbert Talbot. Um, so I just wanted to say we, we do, um, so we're offering advice by phone or email. Um, so if email would work better, we can do that. We've got a help at um, Citizens of Ice SMPT address. I can put in the chat, um, obviously for Swansea and Nicola Talbot. Um, and we're also, we have been offering a video service um, called Attend Anywhere, which is the one that the GPs use. But nobody's taken us up, taken it up on us, taken us up on it. So it's it's not really very widely out there. But it, it is something we can use. So if you want to get in touch with me, if that would be useful and we can sort something out. Thanks, Pat. I, I've got a, a girl in um, in Bridgen who, you know, when she was getting face to face, it was fantastic. And it's not a criticism. It's just that yeah, because of her hearing issues, she, she's in a wheelchair. She's isolated at home. It would be really handy if she could have online advice and management to take a case forward rather than wait until after COVID-19, which could be months and months down the line when the vaccine's rolled out. So it, I might take you up on your offer if you could help this this young girl, that would be really helpful. Well, we won't be able to help her if she lives in Bridge End. Okay, so. We're, just, we're all individual charities, so we cover, ah, okay. we're not allowed to poach their clients. Fair enough, um, all right. But, <laughs> I but encourage that. that lives in Swansea, Leith, but Talbot, we can help. Okay, thank you. Um, and talk talk to them because there's no reason why they can't do email advice. No, email's fine, but it's not it's not practical for this particular veteran. An online video call would be better. Right. Well, they, yeah, some of them still cut the offer and others didn't, so I don't know what Bridget did. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. okay. Thanks, Pat. <clears throat> thank you all. Grace. Thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> just uh, I remembered when Phil Flower was talking earlier about the um, air cadets. Phil, haven't you got a big anniversary this year with the air cadets? Yeah, we've got the it's the 80th anniversary of the Royal Air Force Air Cadets, which um, 
you know, we're hoping to tie in with um, a lot of centenary events. As you know, the, the, the Royal British Legion and the Poppy Appeal took, um, well, every every charity, I suppose, within the last year has had a, a really woeful time to raise funds. Um, and I, I've, I've been working with a team to look at what we can do, certainly this year and into uh, 2022, not only for the Royal Air Force Air Cadets, for, but for the, the British Legion as well. Do you want me to run through some of the proposed events, Grace? Yeah, it'd be great if you can. Um, uh, yeah. Obviously, it depends when we get out of the situation. Yeah. Well, well, again, you know, I'm of a mind that we can't just sit back and wait for everything to clear. We, we've got to be positive and move ahead. And uh, as I said, you know, with the Connect Forces for the Veterans, we're already looking at how we can better ourselves before we even get back. Um, so just I'll just go on to these events that we've uh, we've got a schools poster competition which which will be coming out in May time, which if you think is a good idea we can uh, you know we can bring that into Neath Patalbot as well. Uh, we've got a car rally, a vintage car rally that's on the sixth of June this year to tie in with uh, D Day, uh, and again you know if any of these events are prevented by by COVID then we can just move them forward. But uh, we're looking at two hundred cars uh, days are coming on to sponsor it, so that's one of our events. We've We've got a motorcycle rally uh, as well coming up in the summer. There's a hog roast the 31st of July. Uh, we know we can certainly do one in Neath Patal, but as well, Grace, if uh, if uh, if you think that's a good idea. Uh, we, we've got a black tie dinner in the um, in the Brangwyn Hall. That's in February 22. Um, I believe that the Royal British Legion in the city of Swansea are being considered for the freedom of the city, which. Uh, will then give everybody the opportunity to take part in that, all, all veterans associations and uh, mm -hmm. and charities. We look at skydives and uh, a penalty shootout with the Swans, but obviously that's on a back burner with the Swans. They've said, you know, until we can get some sort of uh, fan base there. I've got the Army C and the Air Cadets walking up Penna Van, and that's going to be in 2022 um, for the centenary. Uh, and uh, lots of lots of other things as well, and uh, a working group to work on the poppy appeal. The Royal, you know, the Royal Air Force Air Cadets 80th anniversary. We've got a, a virtual um, church parade on Sunday, the 7th of February. So um, I'll send out an invitation to you all if you want to come along. It's for an hour, and uh, it's going to be cadet led as well. So I'm pretty much 100% for cadets leading because they're far more interesting than people like myself. And uh, so yeah, uh, you know we're we're all curtailed that we in what what we can do. Uh, certainly, my vision for for the wing has been uh, sort of temporarily halted, but we're still moving forward. And any small step we take. Uh, during COVID will have a huge impact when, when we come out. So, yeah, two massive um, centenary, well, a centenary for the Royal British Legion and the 80th of the Royal Air Force Air Cadets. And, uh, you know, I'm of a mind that um, we, we involve everybody, the Sea and the Army Cadets in the, the Air Cadet 80th because, um, you know, we, are, we do work closely together and uh, uh, in, in particular to the Army and the Sea Cadets. I know, Grace, that you, you will um, support this as well as Wendy, that the the sea and the army cadets are, are real ambassadors and uh, push the poppy appeal, uh, you know, beyond what what I would expect in in the area. So um, it's about everybody being involved. So you know, they're, they're also a great good. body of young people. Yeah, and um, you know, I've never thought about it until this meeting. Really, that um, we've never looked at engaging these youngsters with with the veterans, and uh, mm -hmm. if we can do that through the charities here. Um, obviously, there'll be guidelines each cadet force will have to follow, some sort of a compliance. But uh, yeah, you know, whatever the cadets can do, the, the better, because they do get well recognised for community work. Uh, and perhaps out on the street raising funds is not, not the only way. Um, uh, certainly one-to-one -one contact with a veteran or a group of veterans, which we can set up meetings with, would be far more meaningful, I suppose, for the individuals than the cadets, uh, you know, just out collecting. So it, it's an avenue that we, we really need to look at. Okay, and um, thanks, Phil. And Tom, what you said about the um, the winter fuel allowance is quite concerning. I get regular newsletters from the DWP. I just checked them out. There was nothing in the, the newsletter about this. But if you can send me the information you've got, I'll send yeah. it to my contact in the DWP and get something uh, something official off them. Yeah. Okay. No problem. On it. No problem. That's it, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, Grace and Phil. That was really uh, looking forward to all the 
all that's happening in this meeting today has been good. <laughs> Have anybody else got any updates or anything they want to say? Or have you all done that now? No. Um, so it's just the next meeting will be the 15th of March at 2 p.m. So if we will be on a bigger screen next time and we can see more. I am going to bad back like I got now, <laughs> leaning over. So we'll see you all then. I thank you to everyone for your participation in the meeting. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Stay thank safe, you. Bye -bye. everyone. Bye.